Ukraine's northern regions rise from the rubble as its counter-offensive makes significant ground. Moscow hails its annexation of Ukrainian territories, while Kyiv responds with formal NATO membership application. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg says the alliance supports Ukraine's right to decide its future. Russia vetoes UN Security Council resolution, condemning its annexation of Ukrainian regions. Hurricane Ian hit South Carolina after causing tremendous destruction in Florida, where authorities don't know how many have died. The Ukrainian army continues its advance on the northern front, as liberated cities such as Kupyansk try to re-emerge from the destruction. The fiercest fighting is taking place further south in the town of Lyman, where reports differ as to whether Kiev has already taken the town, or at least is in a position to encircle it. We have significant results in the east of our country. There is already enough public information about this. Everyone has heard what is happening in Lyman, Donetsk region. These steps mean a lot to us. Kyiv also says Friday's attack on a civilian convoy in the city of Zaporizhia by Russia was deliberate. These strikes were clearly calculated. You can see that here in the area there is no military facility, no accumulation of equipment, and they were not here. There are always, every day, only civilians who are moving to the temporarily occupied territory. These are elderly people, women with children and families. Russian appointed officials in Zaporizhia blamed Ukraine for the attack without providing evidence. 26 people lost their lives in Friday's attack. <laughs> Hundreds of people gathered in Moscow's Red Square to celebrate the results of the so-called referendums, which has seen the country illegally annex four regions in East Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed the treaties on Friday to illegally annex Zaporizhia, Luhansk, Donetsk and Kherson in a sharp escalation of his seven-month invasion. Addressing the crowd, President Putin said people had the right to make a choice. People came to the referendum and made this choice, to be with their historical motherland, with Russia. He added, Russia isn't just opening the doors of its dear house, it's opening its heart to its brothers and sisters. Welcome home. Ukraine's response is naturally one of disgust. On Friday, they formally requested NATO membership. Up until now, its application has been shelved, as NATO members and allies with Ukraine held off the country from joining in the hope of peace negotiations. NATO head Jens Stoltenberg also publicly backed Ukraine with his support. De facto, we have Ukrainian President Volodymyr de Zelensky de says, de facto, we have already completed our path to NATO. De facto, we have already proven our consistency with the alliance's standards. They are real for Ukraine, real on the battlefield and in all aspects of our interaction. We trust each other, we help each other and we protect each other. This is what the alliance is. President Zelensky also said that he will not sit down at the negotiation table as long as President Putin is president. The NATO military alliance has given its response to Ukraine's announcement that it plans to submit an application for emergency membership. Every democracy in Europe has the right to apply for NATO membership and NATO allies respect that uh, right. And we have stated again and again that NATO's door remains uh, open. We uh, support Ukraine's right uh, to choose its own, its own path. Uh, to decide uh, what kind of uh, security arrangements it wants to be uh, part of. Uh, then uh, a decision on membership, uh, of course, has to be taken by uh, all 30 allies, and we take these decisions by uh, consensus. Uh, our focus now uh, is on providing uh, 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 immediate uh, support to Ukraine uh, to help Ukraine defend itself against uh, uh, the Russian brutal invasion. Very much. This the NATO chief said that Thank Russia's you. formal annexation of the Ukrainian territories doesn't change the nature of the conflict.
Russia has vetoed a UN Security Council resolution condemning the annexation of the territories that Moscow has just annexed de facto. Among its permanent members, all voted in favor of the motion. Ambassadors to the UN then took to the floor to vent their frustration. Yet again, Russia has abused its veto to defend its illegal actions. Council members have voted in different ways. But one thing is clear. Not a single other member of this council recognizes Russia's attempted illegal annexation of Ukrainian territory. Russia's veto doesn't change that fact. We are tired of repeating it again and again, allowing Russia to avail itself of the right of the Soviet Union to veto decisions of the Security Council effectively prevents this body from exercising its primary responsibility under the UN Charter, maintenance of international peace and security. U.S. President Joe Biden reiterated his support for Ukraine. American and its allies are not going, let me emphasize, are not going to be intimidated, are not going to be intimidated by Putin and his reckless words and threats. The U.S. Congress also approved $12.3 billion in aid on Friday to help Ukraine battle its invasion by Russia. With questions from uh, the, the EU question. Commission has asked member states to reduce the number of visas given to Russians. In the wake of Moscow's impending annexation of four partially occupied Ukrainian territories, it seems the EU is upping its security measures towards Russians. Member states need to do a very thorough security assessment and if a person could be a security threat or be a threat towards the international relation for some of the member states, this person should not be issued a visa. If a person, a Russian citizen, intends to stay longer than 90 days in the EU, he or she should not be issued a visa. An estimated 200,000 Russian citizens have fled to neighboring countries since Russian President Vladimir Putin announced a partial mobilization of reservists. Finland closed its border completely to Russians with tourist visas on Friday, citing security concerns. For now, the Kremlin has not prevented its citizens from leaving the country. However, it seems that many bordering states are acting before Russia does. Hurricane Ian's raw power has reached South Carolina. It's now a Category 1 hurricane. U.S. President Joe Biden has declared an emergency to free up resources and aid for the population. Ian's path through Florida was also devastating. Authorities don't know yet how many have died. The situation in Florida is far more devastating. We're just beginning to see the scale of that destruction. It's likely to rank among the worst of the nations and the worst in the nation's history. You have all seen the tele seen on television, homes and property wiped out. It's going to take months, years to rebuild. Many roads and other vital infrastructure have been left ruined as Ian smashed through the state. The governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, has said that crews went door to door to over 3,000 homes in the hardest hit areas in order to help survivors. Surrounded by destruction and trapped in their own homes, many were unable to call for help as electricity and mobile networks remained down. Over a dozen members of Burkina Faso's army seized control of its state television late Friday, declaring that the country's coup leader turned president, Paul Henry Sanda Ogo Damiba, had been overthrown. Burkina Faso's latest military power grab follows in the footsteps of neighbouring Mali, which also saw a second coup in nine months after the August 2020 coup. Iranian state-linked media reported late Friday that up to 19 people, including a commander in the paramilitary Revolutionary Guard, were killed in an attack by armed separatists on a police base in the eastern city of Zahadan. It was not immediately made clear if the attack, which unfolded in the day as crowds had gathered at a nearby mosque for Friday prayers, was related to the nationwide anti-government protests gripping the nation.